This is a video about 512 vector sequencer for Eurorack. In this first video, what we're going to take a look at is some basic sequence programming, understanding parts, jumping around between the basic part settings, and uh, getting a general sense for how you can use this module at a basic level. So uh, the first thing to understand about vector sequencer is that it's made up of eight parts. Now you can think of a part uh, as like a musical part, or I've seen other sequencers call this a track. It doesn't act exactly like a track. You'll see that as we go. Uh, but you can think of a part as it's, it's one set of pitches and uh, gates that you can put together and, and output in various ways. One thing to be aware of is even though the vector sequencer supports eight parts, the actual sequencer itself only has two pairs of pitch, gate, and velocity output. So there's one here and there's one here. And then in addition, it has two TRS MIDI outputs. So understanding parts, uh, being able to jump between them is important. You can see over here on the left, there's a blue part button. If we press that, we can see the, the parts that we have in this particular preset. Now I've already gone ahead and uh, patched up a couple of oscillators and I named them here. So you can see my part one is, that's my Tone Star 8106 and part two is my Twin Waves. You can name the parts, but you only have five characters. So it is kind of convenient. One of the things you'll notice, so I've, I've got this first part selected here. I could select the second part if I wanted. Um, one of the things you'll notice is that whatever part is active on this second screen will show up here. So it's, it's easy to keep track. The other thing that's really cool is you notice that the, the color of the steps are changing. So you can set a custom color per part, and that just makes it a little bit easier uh, at a glance to, to know which part you're editing. Once you have a part selected, these buttons along the top here will let you change all of the various options for that part. So if I press pitch, you can see that we're still editing the Tone Star 8106, and anything we do here is, is going to modify the pitch only for that part. Most of the buttons up on the top here, you can press multiple times, and pressing it additional times will give you a couple more options. So you can see here we're, we're choosing the glide. Uh, same thing here for step length. We can choose between length and the number of times that that repeats, so on and so forth. So that's parts. Now once you have a part selected, uh, you can ed edit the information about it. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and turn something on. So by default, you notice that when I selected gate, everything has a rest on it. We could turn up the gate length on this first step here. Let me go ahead and run it. Yeah, so, you know, it's pretty boring. It does exactly what you think. Uh, one of the cool things here is if you use this, uh, what they call the ninth encoder, it will modify uh, all of them at the same time. There's, a, there's also a feature where you can select individual steps and modify that. I'll talk about that later. Uh, when you initialize a new part, uh, either by starting the sequencer fresh or by clearing it out because you want to do something new, one of the things that it will do is it'll automatically set all of the pitches to the tonic of whatever key you're in. So over here, there's a global button. If we hit global, we can see that I have already set this up to be in the key of A minor, which is a really nice feature that it uh, go ahead, goes ahead and selects that for us. One of the things actually that originally drew me to the vector sequencer was uh, this, this row of eight knobs down here. I mean, you look at it and you can tell it's obviously a digital sequencer, but the fact that there's a knob per step was very reminiscent to me of like a classic 5U or Moog style sequencer where there's a potentiometer that adjusts the volt per octave of each step. It has a lot of that, that feel to it. And one of the nice things about the sequencer is that you can just come in here and start turning some knobs and maybe get to something that you like. Right, I, I didn't spend that much time thinking about it, but it actually doesn't sound that bad, just from kind of fiddling with it. You know, uh, coming from a DAW perspective, 
one of the things that's nice is just to use your hands and just sort of turn knobs and, and, and mess around with it as you go. Now, it's fun to turn the knobs, and one of the things you may have noticed is as I was doing that, all of the pitches that it was allowing me to select were in the key, which is cool. Now, we could turn that off if we wanted. We could go back to chromatic and pick anything we want, but it's kind of nice to just, just have fun and turn the knobs as you go. Kind of evolve it yourself. Okay, so Vector Sequencer, of course, has a bunch of other neat things. You noticed earlier that when I hit pitch a second time that there is a glide amount that we can add. You saw also that I adjusted the gate length. This is a cool feature, which is a groove. It allows you to shift the timing of the note a little bit forwards or backwards. maybe a little funky but you can hear it it maybe maybe let you give it a little bit more of a human feel I'm gonna turn some of this down it's getting to be a little much okay uh, another neat feature is vol Vector Sequencer is kind of built around uh, MIDI a little bit. And one of the things you notice here is that I can adjust velocity values. So for the two CV output sets that come with the module, you see that there's a dedicated velocity out. Uh, so what you can do is if you have discrete values that you want to send out to a filter or something of that sort, you certainly can. Actually, let's go ahead and just wire that up. OK, so I'm going to take the velocity out here of my part one. And I'm going to bring it into mod one there. So there you can hear. This value is it's almost like you have a dedicated uh, CV extra CV sequencer per part, which is cool. Uh, one of the one of the disadvantages here is you can set multiple values for extra uh, MIDI CCs, but what you cannot do is you cannot set a glide on this. Now, I did notice uh, on some of the discussion forums that that's a feature that people are asking for. So it seems like it's being talked about. I wouldn't be surprised to see it coming up soon. Uh, it would really be nice to be able to glide evenly between these so that your filter, uh, for example, if you're, if you're moving the filter, it's not these binary values that are jumping around. One of my favorite features of the vector is actually this button here. And when I first got it, I didn't, I didn't expect what this was going to do. So gate lets you set the gate length all right, so we're, we're getting a really short gate there. But what length does is it lets you set the number of beats that the gate would count for. You can see it defaults to one on everything, but we can turn up this first one here. So that first note you can hear is now hitting for three beats. You can also subtract. getting a little funky here. Let me turn that back. Um, this, this is actually, I think, a really understated se uh, feature of the sequencer. Because a lot of sequencers, what they do is they say, okay, you've got, you know, eight or 16 or 32 steps, and you're locked in to always having to be an eighth note or a 16th note or a quarter note or whatever that is that you set it for. And if you want to break out of that 
that grid, so to speak, what you end up having to do is you have to set your gate mode to legato so that they can connect. Now what that means from a design standpoint is most sequencers when you use them you have to think about what's the smallest beat that I want to have, you know, is, am I, is the fastest I want to go, 16th note, and then you have to make every step a 16th note and then use legato to connect. I actually find that really annoying. What this sequencer does I think is amazing because you can pick that my bass step is going to be for example a quarter note and you know that when you do two, that, that quarter note step is suddenly going to become a half note. Or you know if you do one half, then that quarter note is going to become an eighth note. I think this is way easier to think about and to design around because it doesn't lock you in necessarily to always having to think in terms of your fastest beat. The other thing in this category, let me turn that off real quick. The other thing in this category is repeat. And that works similar to, to length. But instead of that beat taking up that amount of space, it'll take up that amount of space, but it will, it will repeat it. And as you would expect from such a sequencer, you can also do ratchet. Ratchet is basically the opposite of repeat, which is you still use the same length of beat. It still counts as one beat, but instead the note gets halved or third and it plays two or three times in that same space. You can see you can ratchet up to four. Okay, but the fun isn't over yet. <laughs> the sequencer keeps going. Chance. Chance starts to set the sequencer apart even more. So there's three different pages here in Chance. And uh, the first one, PRB, stands for probability. We're going to come back to that. TYP stands for type. And then the third thing is bar. So let's start with type. What type allows you to do is to set what kind of chance operation is going to happen. Uh, and it takes a little bit of time to learn what all these symbols are. The manual covers uh, all of them. There's like one, one quick reference chart, which is really nice. Uh, so I know, for example, this one is going to be a chance to jump back a step. This is a chance to skip that step. Uh, there's some fun ones in here about a chance to ratchet. Let me show you some other ones. There is a chance to increase the semitone by a random amount, increase by a fixed amount. So for this one, uh, seven semitones would be a fifth up. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff. So we go to probability and we start turning it. This is, this is the chance for that to fire. So I'm gonna set both of these at 50% and we'll listen to that real quick. So you can hear there, half of the time we're, we're ratcheting on two beats and half of the time we're getting a fifth on that second step instead. Now that third page, which was bar, is an interesting feature. What it will allow you to do is to specify that that chance operation only happens on that bar. So for example, here, three, it means that only on the third bar will there be a 50% chance. So there you heard it, you heard it fire. One of the interesting things you can do with that is if you turn up the probability it, to 100%, it basically means that you can say, uh, do this operation every third bar or every fourth bar, and you can kind of automatically add in variety without ever really touching uh, much on the sequencer.
All right. Are you ready for some more? Modulation, I'm going to talk about a little bit more in a different video, but just so that you're aware, in addition to having the main uh, pitch sequencer you know, and gate and all that stuff, and in addition to having velocity, a uh, vector sequencer also comes with two subsequencers. And it turns out that that's ridiculously powerful. I'll show you a bit more about that in a follow up video. A couple more things before we wrap this one up. Uh, control will let you adjust the settings for that part. So obviously in global, you can kind of tweak around with what the defaults are, but here we can we can change the base uh, beat duration for this, and you can, you can hear that changing. You can change the direction, uh, the length, the starting point, the octave, all that kind of stuff. These settings start becoming more relevant as you use those subsequencers. All right, one last thing, and we're gonna wrap this up. In addition to all of that, Vector Sequencer also has both Generate and Evolve. Now, a number of sequencers out there on the market will do Generation, which is cool. You can take basically a blank canvas and say, spit a bunch of notes out in this key, and it will give you something. What Vector Sequencer does on top of that is it has Evolve. So you see here, we've got, we've got a set of pitches, A, C, A, G, da, 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 da. If I hold shift and I hit this button here, Evo, you notice that when I did that, the pitches changed. And so we got something that didn't really drastically change, but it's a little bit different. So let's, let's listen to it a few times through and then I'll hit it again. Now you might notice that's a subtle effect. I actually really like that because uh, in this mode where we're going back and forth, it's a little harder to notice, but if you're just going forwards or backwards, it adds a really nice subtle variance to what you were doing. Okay, so that's it for the basics of part editing in Vector Sequencer. I'll see you next time as we dive into the subsequencers. Thank you.